For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, live on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wait. For the record, for the record. Good morning, everybody. It is currently Monday, July 15th, day 15, 16, 16, 14. I don't remember. Um, but basically, it is 5.30 a.m., about ready to head to the gym. I'm going to down some pre-workout right now, hopefully wake up a little bit. I haven't been working out this early this past week. I've been working out around like 9, 10 o'clock in the morning as opposed to like 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. So we're going to wake up a little bit and hit the gym. going to be a good pull workout today, and then we're going to come back, make some breakfast, and get ready to head to work. So yeah, hopefully it's going to be a good day. It's looking kind of funky outside, might be a little bit cloudy, a little bit rainy, we'll have to see, hopefully it doesn't rain, but if it does, the yard could use it, that's for sure, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get ready and head to the gym, I will meet you guys there, all right, how's everybody doing today, so I want to start off just by apologizing for the mix-up on yesterday's video, I said that yesterday was Monday when it was actually Sunday, so today is Monday, July 15th, and even though this is going up on the 18th, I currently have kind of like a two, three day buffer between videos just to kind of be able to actually get them out ideally on a daily basis. This just gives me like a day, maybe a day and a half to get everything edited um, so that if things get kind of crazy with work, which they do uh, like kind of at the drop of a dime, or the drop of a hat, they can get pretty crazy and hectic and I can end up being there for 12, 15 hours without any notice. So it's nice to have that buffer time in order to just make sure I'm able to get a video edited and uploaded, hopefully in time. Assuming I don't have any issues with the uploading process, but anyway, moving on, we're gonna start today's workout off with a superset between pull-ups and a bent over kettlebell row so you see i'm using kettlebells as opposed to a dumbbell main reason for this is it was pretty busy at the gym this morning as you can maybe make out in the background occasionally so i didn't want to go all the way up to the front and they're one of first of all there weren't any benches available second they were just tons of people up by the dumbbells so just use kettlebells it's pretty much the same movement kind of changes the resistance curve a little bit as we've talked about in the past about kettlebells so kind of fun to change it up a little but overall really nice movement started off with four sets of amrap on pull-ups staying about one shy of failure and then four sets of 10 to 12 reps per arm on the kettlebell rows. Now once I finished that, then I moved into a neutral wide grip. So you can see I've got that neutral grip bar there. Neutral wide grip um, seated cable row. With that one, did three sets, 12 to 15 reps, focusing on a nice full stretch at the bottom. We'll keep my lower back arch or as straight as possible. Then I moved into another superset combination here, which was cable pullovers. With this, be sure you're driving your chest through the movement and up. That'll give you tighter contraction on your um, lats, especially towards the center of your shoulder blades. As you can kind of see here, as I'm able to bring my hands down, my elbows come back, I pinch my shoulder blades together, allowing me to really activate the center of my back just below my traps. Supersetting that with some slow, concentrated lat pulldowns. With this one, really focus on that slow negative. You can see I'm coming down, pausing just a fraction of a second, and then controlling the weight up. I do this for about 10 to 15 reps, and I tend what I did. Bleh, <laughs> I cannot speak, guys. Sorry about that, but. What I did towards the end of the last two sets on lat pull down, where I just kind of pumped out a few extra reps, just to again force some extra blood into the muscle, kind of work on a little bit of a pump there and just increase the intensity and work past failure. So you can see right there, I'm starting to pump them out. But with that superset was three sets of each exercise, 
10 to 12 reps on the pullovers. And then, like I said, 12 to, well, about 10 or 12 to 15 reps on the pull downs. Um, it, once you start hitting failure, try and pump out a couple of extra reps just to force that extra hypertrophy. Now, once I finished that, I moved into a seated machine low row. And with this, I did something a little bit different. You guys, you guys might know this from some previous videos. I call it a descending set. So if you count my reps per arm, you'll notice that as I'm holding one arm contracted, I'm repping out the other arm. Now the reps are gonna start with five reps on one, one side. Then you're gonna hold that peak contraction on that same side, switch to the other arm, five reps, switch to the other arm, four reps, switch back, four reps, and so on and so on until you get down to one rep each. And then once you finish that off, what I like to do is I like to pump out an additional five reps. So in total, you're gonna to be doing 20 reps per arm, and you're gonna be doing isometric holds basically while you're repping out 15 of those reps. So it's a hell of a kind of finisher. You're gonna feel like crazy pumps going on with that movement. Um, you can throw that into that technique into just about anything, but it's one of my favorite things just to again, kind of just pump some, a hell of a lot of blood. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do. But anyway, did three of those. Then I moved into some biceps, started off with just some barbell preacher curls using like preloaded barbells here. With this one did three sets, six to eight reps. And with this, I was really focusing on those negatives. Once I started to fail, you'll see there, it's basically just doing as much as I can to not let the weight just drop. Now, once I finished that, I moved into some dumbbell hammer curls. And with this one, again, we're gonna do a little bit of an intensity technique here. We're gonna start with both hands together. And then once I pretty much get right at or just shy of failure, what I'll end up doing is I'll switching to an alternating. So you see I'm going nice, slow, controlled movements. We'll switch the angle here in just a sec so you can really see that I'm keeping my elbows in line with my body. I'm not letting them come forward in front of my torso. And we're gonna be doing around 10 to 12 reps as many as we can get with controlled form. And then once we start failing or starting to have to use momentum, that's when we'll start incorporating a little bit of momentum, cheating a little bit, and just getting them up, switching over to an alternate hammer curl. Three sets, 10 to 12, plus an additional two to four forced, as you guys were seeing there. Well, forced, cheat reps, whatever you wanna call them. Then moved into some cable hammer curls. Now with this one, really focus on locking out at the bottom. You can see just that fraction of a second at the bottom where I'm locking out, stretching the bicep as much as it'll stretch. And then I'm coming back up immediately and squeezing, focusing those negatives. That's a huge key to any kind of bicep training and just about almost any training in general is you wanna focus on the negative portion of the rep. Don't just let that weight fall back down. Don't just let the bar go back down, whatever you're doing focus that negative because if you think about it this way the negative portion of a rep is 50 percent of the movement so if you just let that 50 percent go you're giving away and you're giving up on 50 percent of your growth think about it that way and that'll just kind of give you some incentive to force that little extra bit on the negatives now with that, I did four sets, 12 to 15 reps to burn out the biceps. And then I moved into three sets of 20 reps with minimal rest on a dumbbell seated lateral raise. As you guys know before, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, I'm trying to incorporate lateral raises or lateral movement of some kind in every single upper body workout. And that was today's. All right, guys, so we just finished up, just finished up a pretty good pull workout, threw in some shoulders at the end as usual, trying to hit the lateral head of my shoulders about four times a week. So not just on my shoulder focus day and not just on my push days, but I'm also incorporating like some form of lateral raise, whether it's dumbbells, kettlebells, cable, 
any kind of lateral raise, something to hit the lateral head every single upper body day. So basically every day I'm not doing legs. And the whole point of that is to hopefully put more emphasis and growth on the caps of my shoulders because that's one of my weak points. Really want to try and get that wider look on the top of my body. And yeah, overall pretty damn good workout. Tried to increase the intensity as I've been doing with most of my workouts recently, just keeping the rest periods lower, supersetting a lot more exercises together and just trying to really keep the pump going. I definitely noticed a little bit of fatigue setting in right around the kind of 45, 50, maybe 60 minute mark. And that's kind of what I've noticed before. So I'm trying to keep my workouts really around that 60 minute mark or basically right about an hour as much as possible right now, mainly just because I'm in a deficit so energy is a little bit lower than usual. And I also didn't have any kind of carbs pre-workout today. I, that's what I usually do when I'm not uh, in a deficit is I don't necessarily eat before I go to the gym. However, these last couple weeks, I've been doing like my muffins uh, or at least half a muffin, quarter of a muffin, something like that. Or last week I was doing a banana before, the, before I hit the gym and that was helping a little bit. However, today, I don't know. I might try and see if I do like a little bit of watermelon or something just to maybe keep my stomach a little bit happier because right around, again, right around that kind of hour mark is when I start getting really fatigued and really hungry is the biggest thing. So we'll have to see. I might even look into like a carbohydrate powder, something that is like super quick digesting or kind of play with some things, test out some stuff and see if anything actually helps me or not. Overall, like I said though, good pull workout and I got to head home now, cook some breakfast, uh, get ready to head to work and hopefully it's gonna be a pretty good day. It's definitely looking better than it was this morning. I will see you guys in just a little bit. All right guys, back from the gym and first things first, I'm gonna make up a post-workout protein shake. Currently I'm using the Cellucor Core Performance Whey Protein. Now, do you need protein supplements? No. Do they make things easier? Yes. Personally, as I start getting deeper into prep and closer to a competition or closer to the competition, I'll probably end up actually cutting this out so that I can have more physical food just because actual sources of protein are gonna, or just because solid sources of protein and food are gonna keep you full longer as opposed to a shake. Um, but for the most part, Protein supplements and protein powders and things like that are exactly what they are. They're supplements. They're supposed to supplement your diet. So you don't want to go crazy with them. You don't want to have four or five scoops of this stuff a day in order to hit your protein goals. You should be getting the majority of your protein from good solid sources such as lean meats, fish, all kinds of things like that. You don't want to be getting it from powdered supplement sources as much as possible. So I'm going to do one scoop or one serving of this. Well, two scoops is one serving. Throw a little bit of water in there. I'm gonna chug this guy and then I'm gonna make breakfast. And there we go. Now for my first meal today, I'm gonna be having two whole eggs, one serving of pancake mix topped with a little bit of Walden Farms calorie-free syrup. And then I'm not sure if I'm gonna do some watermelon with that, plus my oatmeal. I might save that for a little later in the day. Um, but that's gonna be my main first meal is this protein shake, couple of eggs, and some pancakes. So let's get cooking. <music> I'm actually gonna put together my lunch for today, so I'm gonna grab my lunch box and throw everything in it while this is finishing up.
One perfect pancake and two over easy eggs. We're gonna top this with just a little bit of Walden Farms calorie free syrup. Now this stuff is actually surprisingly good. I don't know what they put in it to make it calorie free. It's got a weird kind of gelatinous texture though. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that, but just use a little bit of this because this stuff is pretty expensive. It's like $5 for this tiny little bottle. So yeah, that's why I said don't use it unless you absolutely need it. I forgot to calculate syrup into my macros this week, which is the only reason I'm using this. Otherwise I'd be using sugar-free syrup because my wife just gave me a pretty good stink eye there when I told her how much it was, so. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna eat this, get ready, head to work. I will see you guys maybe around lunchtime. We'll go do something, so bye. Get out of there, there we go, all right. Whew, well, all that B-roll and I am back home. So, it was pretty crappy weather during lunch, so I ended up not really going out and doing anything. I wanted to do all this kind of stuff, and anyway, it was pouring down rain pretty much all day until now, as you guys saw, it's just gorgeous right now. But I am back home and I'm about to head out again because I gotta go do cardio. It is another cardio day for me. Yay! And this week I'm actually gonna be, so this is week three of prep so far, just starting week three. And I'm actually gonna be stepping up the cardio intensity a little bit. So I have been going on uh, the stair mill. I don't know exactly, I have to check sometime exactly what settings it'll go up to. But I have been going at an intensity level of six for 30 minutes, which comes out to around 290 to 300 calories and according to the machine, calories. That's just kind of the intensity level that I've been going at and sticking at it for the entire duration of the cardio. But this week and next week, I'm gonna crank the intensity up to seven. So one, that, one notch higher, a little bit higher intensity and keep the 30 minute mark. And I'm gonna see just kind of how I feel, just slowly start dialing up the intensity on the cardio because there's two things that I can play with with cardio variations, well, three intensity, time, and quantity. So we'll get into a full cardio discussion one day. I'll do a full video on that, but basically right now, I'm trying to keep my cardio minimal. So every other day, 30 minutes at a very low, at least for me, low moderate intensity. Now I'm gonna start stepping that intensity up a little bit. But anyway, off to the gym. I will see you guys after. All right, everybody, so we are back from cardio, did 30 minutes, and typically, so before we get into this stuff, like I was talking about before, typically what I was doing is 30 minutes of cardio on the stair mill at an intensity level of six. Now, if I recall, the intensity goes up to 12, so 50% intensity or maximum capability of the stair mill. Now, today I did 30 minutes again, but this time I stepped the intensity level up from six to seven. And typically at the previous intensity, I would do in 30 minutes, 290 calories according to the machine. Today I did 325 calories, I believe. So took it up about 10% roughly, maybe a little bit more, 10, 12% of the total calories. And yeah, I got pretty sweaty. That first five minutes was a little bit of a grind because it was definitely little bit more intense than I was used to. But after I finished that first couple minutes and it was just nice, got right into a groove, started watching some YouTube, watching some videos, things like that, and it was just smooth sailing. I don't know what it is, but after I pushed through that first five minutes or so of the cardio, I could go for like an hour, at least right now, with my current um, conditioning and everything and my current energy levels, I could go for probably an hour without any issue. But anyway, we are back. I am gonna have my last meal for today, which is about 250, 200 grams of watermelon. Mmm, that's so refreshing after a long cardio session. I'm gonna keep watermelon in my diet as long as I possibly can. And then, I've got one and a quarter serving of homai white rice. Let's zoom in a little bit here. 
So I've got one and a quarter servings of white rice. I've got three ounces of 93.7 lean ground turkey. And then I have four ounces of cooked chicken breast. So baked chicken breast. And I am gonna put on this two servings or four tablespoons of this paste picante. Get that in focus the same. There we go. This guy, medium salsa. Throw two servings of that on there. Plus, uh, you guys know it, you guys love it. The cilantro cream dressing. Oh yeah, there we go. This stuff is going to be a lifesaver during this prep. Hopefully Costco doesn't stop carrying it because this stuff is amazing. And if they do stop carrying it, I need to figure out how to make this. But anyway, two servings of this. No, not two servings. One serving of this, two servings of this. Pour that all over this guy. And then that's gonna be my dinner. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I know it wasn't too exciting. I was planning to do a little bit more during kind of lunch at work, but like I said, it was just pouring rain. So it is what it is. Had a pretty damn good workout this morning at the very least. Got the cardio in, feeling pretty good. And mmm, I love watermelon. Uh, so if you guys made it this far in the video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It definitely helps out. As always, subscribe for more videos coming at you every day. Like I said before, I'm gonna keep this daily vlogging up as long as I possibly can. The videos might end up going up a little bit later occasionally, like around seven, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. But if it's before midnight, it still counts. <laughs> at least in my book. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wish. For the record, for the record, yeah. For the